Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I am back with another review, and I have no idea what that was. It's an involuntary twitch. But, uh, the reason you're seeing me and it's not a masterpiece review is because what I have today is kind of, sort of, on the level of a masterpiece. It's just that the box is so big and I want to show it to you. This is from the Takara Unite Warriors line. It is... Uh, Grand Galvatron. Now, I gotta tell you, I am excited. You know, Hasbro throws out a repaint, retool, just to keep, you know, have something on the shelves, get the use out of the mold. Takara went that extra mile here with Grand Galvatron, and uh, basically uh, came up with a fantastic story that fits in with their continuity, and really draws from uh, the Japanese history of Transformers. And so here's the front of the box here. You can see how big it is. And uh, here's the back. I don't want to show too much of the back because there are a couple interesting uh, features done um, with a little retooling and some paint work that I think are phenomenal. But if you're familiar with the Unite Warriors line, you do know that we get uh, this nice magnetic flap. There's an inside look at Grand Galvatron and the individual robots. Um, I actually kind of like how Unite Warriors does everything, in that there's no individual releases, they just go ahead, uh, put the figures out as a set. You get them all in one shot. Now, the story of Grand Galvatron. Um, now, this is Japanese G1 continuity for the most part. There was a time when Galvatron was frozen in ice and basically dead. Cyclonus goes to find him, and somehow the spirit of Galvatron, if I'm remembering the translation correctly, takes over Cyclonus' body, reformatting the body into the Combiner Wars Unite Warriors version of Cyclonus that we know, and thus explaining why he has a Galvatron's head in his stomach, and you actually see in the comic the head popping out. It's actually included in the instructions here. Uh, they go on. Basically, they're summoned by Unicron, because if you remember, something that really wasn't picked up post the movie was that Galvatron, Cyclonus, and Scourge were supposed to be a third race of Transformers called the Unicrons. So they are heralds of Unicron, whatever, if I'm remembering that correctly. It's been a few years. But anyway, they get summoned by Unicron, and while Unicron, Unicron can't give, like, Galatron a new body, he is able to summon minions across the multiverse. So we get Thrust from Armada, which I think is great that they went back to that Japanese. That was, as of right now, I think the most popular Japanese Transformers line since G1. Uh, you've got... Zombie War Breakdown from uh, what the series we knew was Prime, but over there was Arms Micron. And this is, I think, the first time they're getting the off-road mold with that original head. I mean, it's not the right coloring or anything, and it's, it actually looks pretty good as uh, Zombie Breakdown. And um, then, of course, all of a sudden, Starscream shows up, because, you know, he can travel the multiverses as this ghostly spirit, well, Unicron zaps him, and while he's not completely whole in a new body, he is now able to combine with uh, Cyclonus and the Grand Galvatron thing. And then the final part, which I'm not 100% sure if it's G1 uh, Roller or it's from the IDW universe, the comic universe, but it's basically a roller who's been displaced. He's of the G1 time frame, but maybe a different universe that basically feels abandoned by the old Autobots, and he joins with Galvatron. Now, the figures are all repaints, but Takara, you know, went that extra step. We have a lot of these guys have new heads. Um, you know, as I said, the breakdown is basically the first uh, appearance of that off-road, so it's new to Japan. Um, and Roller, um, I actually, as of this recording, I'm trying to think, I don't think Takara, uh, the Japanese fans, have gotten the Rook mold. So this is the first appearance of the Rook mold 
with the Rook head. I mean, it's going to be used down the line uh, when they release their version of Bruticus with Swindle. And then Starscream is a, uh, is, uh, has a new head, is you know a repaint, retool, the, uh, an aerial bot in clear plastic. Same thing with Thrust, it's a new head. So, you know, again, Takara went that extra mile, but enough of me rambling. Well, let's take a look at these figures, because they're really cool. Okay, and here we are. We're going to look at the figures individually. I'm not going to go through the transformations, because I know I've covered them quite a bit on this channel. Uh, one thing I do want to correct, I did make a little mistake. The Magna, uh, Manga, Manja, whatever, that comic that explains the story of Grand Galvatron is not included in the uh, instructions, but what is... It's this very nice, rather humorous little picture of them um, relaxing in a lava pit. So, nice little homage to the uh, planet Galvatron when he merged with Unicron. I think that was the story, but yeah. Starting us off is Cyclonus. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that the paint is a little bit different. This is closer to um, the original animation design. Also, I'm not showing the weapon connectivity because I want to save the weapon till the end. I'm sure most of you know what it looks like, but for those of you who don't, it is a nice little uh, thing that they that Car did, and I, it's going to look really cool. Um, but the landing gear still works. The gun can still connect underneath here, no problem. Um, it's still a remold of silver bolt. But uh, now in these nice new colors, um, a lot more metallic paint, a very nice sheen, um, really cool looking. I mean, obviously the original Classics Universe Cyclonus is going to be the definitive one, but this is a nice uh, take on the figure. Now we're just going to, through the magic of the internet, go right into robot mode. Okay, and here's Cyclonus in his robot mode. Um, a lot more of that uh, metallic lavender is coming through. Um, this looks really nice. I, I mean, I don't know if the camera's really picking up just how great the, and shiny this metallic paint is. Um, you, you know, and it's the Cyclonus mold. I mean, Silverbolt. Silverbolt is probably the best torso in all of Combiner Wars. Um, it's been reused a few times. The only difference is now you have to parts form those little fins, which I know some people are a little unhappy about, but, you know, everything transforms the same way. Um, there's no new head or anything from the American release, so, yeah, I mean, that's about it. So we're going to move on to uh, start looking at the limbs. Okay, and the first limb we're going to take a look at is R Roller. Um, obviously, this is a straight repaint of the Rook mold. And one thing I was a little bit relieved about is the fact that um, they chose to include um, the limb module that was specific to Rook. Because if you remember, it did have a little bit of that special vehicle integration with the little hole right there. So, Because if you remember from the other sets, they try to have a uniform design. And, you know, th this was a little bit different, but, you know, it's good that they decided to keep it. They also did that with uh, Zombie Breakdown, which we'll see. Um, I like the colors. I like the silver paint. Let me go ahead and just remove everything here for you. Now, we do know, as of this recording, May the 4th, Happy Star Wars Day, uh, <laughs> that the mold is going to get a heavy retool into, uh, I think it was Nose Cone, the member of the uh, uh, Technobots who becomes a drill tank. So that's going to be really cool, and I've seen that, and it looks fantastic. Um, already we've seen um, this mold used as Swindle and Hound, but that's basically only been in the Combiner Wars line. Um, Japan will be getting a Swindle in about another month or so. So, that's about it for the... Uh, mold here in uh, vehicle mode. Let's take a look at robot mode. Okay, and um, here's Roller in its robot mode. This is just a straight repaint of the Rook mold. So, the head should be familiar. Um, his little capture claw weapon thingy uh, should be very familiar. It's done up in orange. Just the same type of reddish orange here that's uh, on the combiner port, a little on the inside of the legs. 
it's offset by this, uh, you know, t regular orange color, I'd say. Um, one thing I do like, and I do want to point out, is Takara went that extra mile here, and they painted the hands a different color. So you do have that combiner input port there. I shouldn't say combiner, but that 5 millimeter port right there, separated from the hand. Um, so it doesn't look as, uh, I want to say janky, but, uh, you know, like muddled as it did before. So um, now apparently um, Roller here is going to be, I think, a leg, yes, a leg of uh, Grand Galvatron. So we'll just go ahead, pop him into leg mode, and I'll show you how that looks. And here's Roller in the leg mode, and, you know, you've seen Rook, you know what this is. If you've seen the combiner, you know, there's the knee joint right there. Um, it's nice. I know Hasbro's been doing uh, new hand and foot uh, modules that are uh, dedicated. Would have been nice to see it with this set, but I understand why they didn't go that route. And, um, hey, it works. Now, the instructions don't show the weapon being here, but I'm just sticking it there. I mean, I'm sure if you want to keep it to the side or stick it somewhere else, somewhere else you can definitely do that. All right, time for another figure. All right, and now we're taking a look at Zombie War Breakdown from the Transformers Arms Micron line. Um, this is the second use of the mold in Japan. This is the, the three millionth youth use overall. I'm kidding. Um, actually, this was retooled for first aid, so, I mean, but that was a heavy retool, so. As a pickup truck, this is the only second use, but I do believe this is the first appearance of the off-road head, but it's been repainted to be like a zombie breakdown. Um, as I mentioned, they did include the limb module integration because they did include the right limb, which I'm very pleased about. You also have the axe, you know, which you can stick in wherever you want. They show it on that side. Other than that, the truck is done in a very nice dark almost cobalt blue. You have a nice red striping. Uh, this is very close to the um, Arms Micron color scheme. Obviously, it doesn't have the full deco because it is a different mold. There are some, you know, but you do have the silver and all that. Um, you know, Off-Road was one of the better molds from Combiner Wars and Unite Warriors, but unfortunately its heavy use has led to the joints breaking down over time. So let's see how the robot mode is. Okay, well, uh, the hips aren't as bad as I thought they would be, which is a good thing. Um, these front panels in vehicle mode did have a little bit of a problem staying in place. Other than that, um, the mold is solid. Uh, I'm very impressed that uh, it's held up. I guess maybe Takara did a little bit of their Japanese magic or what have you. But if you're familiar with Off-Road, as I'm sure many of us are, since he was a Wave 1 Combiner Wars figure, uh... It's the same thing. Let's. I mean, the head here is the big uh, special thing now, and I gotta say they did a really great job painting it up to look like um, breakdown from Arms Micron or Prime. And really didn't zombify it. I think. Uh, I think part of the story was that um, Unicron did bring him back to life, but I'm not sure. So it is what it is now. Um, uh, breakdown is going to make the other leg of Grand Galvatron, so we'll just go ahead and uh, get into that mode right now. And here's Zombie War Breakdown, getting a leg up on the competition. I'm sorry. I am so, so sorry for that joke. Oh god, I'm, I'm so ashamed. But it's a leg mode. It's the off-road mode. If you have Ironhide, you know what this looks like. If you have off-road, you know what it looks like. I'm just going to peg on the uh, axe right there. They, um, you know, didn't show it, again, show it in the instructions. Um, so, that's just simple weapon storage. It makes a great leg, and to be honest with you, I feel more comfortable using this version of the mold as a leg just because of um, the looseness of the hip joints. Like, they're not bad, but I don't think they could stand up to being an arm for that long. So now, we'll move on and take, start taking a look at the Jets. 
All right, and uh, here is Thrust. Thrust is a repaint of the Skydive mold. I think I got that right, Skydive. Skydive or Air Raid. Uh, I know Starscream is either, I think, Air Raid and this guy's Skydive, but it's also a retool. We'll have a new head, which we'll see in robot mode. Um, I do like this color scheme. Um, Thrust comes from Armada, which, as I mentioned in the beginning, is probably to this day the most popular Transformers line since G1 in Japan. Love the metallic green detailing. I like the jet being done in this um, gunmetal gray type of look. Really does look close to the original toy. I, I actually didn't have the original version of uh, Thrust. I had it the Universe Repaint and uh, Sunstorm. So, but I am familiar with the mold. Um, you can store the weapons under the wings. That's how the instructions show it. There is also a port right there if you just want to stick the gun there and leave the limb module off to the side. Uh, the wings do sweep back and forth, although they do look a little odd when they're out like that, so just tend to leave them back like that. Um, still waiting for this mold to get repainted into a Sky Striker, but uh, let's pause and take a look at the robot mode. Okay, and uh, here's Thrust, and as you can see, that green picks up more in robot mode. But let's get to the most important part here, and that's the head. This is a new head mold specifically done for this figure. I know when it was first shown, people started getting excited that it's like, oh, we can get cone head combiners, and these really aren't that close to the original G1 cone heads, but... I could see it being used, and one thing I, f I just noticed, I'm surprised I didn't notice it in the preview photos, um, they gave Thrust an open mouth. If you remember from the cartoon and the original toy, he had like a m muted faceplate type of thing, but uh, I do like this head sculpt a lot. It looks really cool, and it does encompass what Thrust is. So really, this is Armada Thrust, but he's been imbued with the powers of Unicron, and given this new body. Other than that, the colors, um, like I said, it's, it's basically the green. You have that gunmetal. You have a little bit of orange right here, that same uh, reddish orange that you saw on uh, Roller. So there is some color cohesion going on. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's about it. I mean, by the way, I haven't mentioned it, but articulation is all the same on these figures and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. So uh, thrust is going to be an arm. So let's go ahead and take a look at the arm mode. Okay, so here's the arm mode. One thing I want to mention right off the bat, and I think it has to do with the paint, is um, the arms do not tab in as well into the little ports on the missiles like they did on the original version of the mold. I mean, they sit there fine, but just like when you're moving the arm around, you make sure you want to grab it from there so the arms don't pop loose. Other than that, you know, it's the arm mode. It is what it is, so yeah. Let's uh, move on and uh, take a look at the final limb, Starscream. Probably the biggest surprise from this set was uh, the inclusion of Ghost Starscream, or really just call him Starscream, and I gotta say it looks really cool. I like the use of the clear plastic. I know it does make people a little bit nervous. One little note when handling the figure in vehicle mode, you really don't want to squeeze on the arms because that does cause this rear section to pop up a little. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is Starscream. I think it would have worked better using the mold that Thrust uses since I think that was what the original G1 figure was. But, you know, if you would have switched the molds, I don't know. Six of one, half of another. Um, but this will be interesting to see what they do in the future. Maybe we get a solid colored Starscream. Get two more for the Seekers uh, using this mold and just have them as limb replacements. But that's something Hasbro would do, not Takara. So uh, get the weapons peg underneath the wing. Uh, I do believe this was originally Air Raid, which was a which became a which uh, Skydive was retooled into. So you do have that weapons port right there. But oh, it's just really cool to see uh, Starscream included in Unite Warriors as a limb. Now let's take a look at the uh, robot mode. Okay, uh, here's Starscream in robot mode. I'm not showing the weapons because I really want to let you see the clear plastic and that. And right off the bat I have to say 
very floppy. Um, the hinges here and the shoulders, as you know, they have to rotate up. Um, very loose. Um, the nose comb was really solid and tight, uh, pegged into the chest, but, you know, it's not that bad. Um, the ratchets here and the arms are virtually non-existent. Um, the ball joints here and the shoulders are tight, but the hips kind of loose. And, it, and they had the same problem as war breakdown in that the front panels here were just flopped open. But really the big um, grabbing point of this is the head. You do have a brand new uh, head mold right here. Um, very much Seeker. Very Starscream-ish. Elixir takes more from the War for Cybertron full Cybertron series, so who knows. But it is kind of cool, and again, you do. I like the little swathy yellow to represent the nose cone chest, since you know the nose cone is now on the back. But you know, uh, this Star Scream is supposed to be an arm. Uh, a little concerned about that, but let's take go ahead and take a look at the arm mode. Okay, here's the arm mode. Uh, so far, the hips are sort of okay. Um, you know, the arms do peg in a little bit better on these uh, shoulder bits, but again, these shoulder bits are rather tight, so, you know, you're going to, I mean, I should say loose, so you're going to want to be careful with them and, you know, just uh, respect the um, jointage, if you will. And, just, you know, when you're moving the arm, just try to grab it from up here so nothing pops loose. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's an arm. I mean, we've seen aerial butt limbs as arms before. So I guess the next step is just to take a look at Grand Galvatron. Before we get into the combined uh, form, I just wanted to show the collector's coin that it comes with. Uh, this is basically the chest of Grand Galvatron that you open it up. And there's the coin, Galvatron's head. I do like how they do these coins. I've become a little bit of a, addicted to them, I guess you can say, uh, since I always go for the versions that come with these coins. And I'm trying to catch up and get some of the uh, earlier Masterpiece ones that I've uh, missed out. But yeah, nice little inclusion, and once again, done for Hasbro Asia. So, there you go. Now on to Grand Galvatron. And here is Grand Galvatron's back. Now you might be wondering why am I showing you the back. And it's basically because I wanted to uh, show off a cute, neat little thing the instructions point out. And it's basically with Starscream and Thrust guns, you can just take them and in the double peg hole where you would have normally have uh, the, the blaster for Cyclonus, you can store these in the back. Because you don't have those slots in the legs anymore because of the thins from the Cyclonus mold. And you just go ahead. There you go. Great storage. Now we're just going to whip the figure around. And the reason why I didn't show Cyclonus's gun before. Here it is. It's been repainted and redone. I mean, it's still the Silverbolt mold, but it's been redone to look like Galvatron's arm cannon which I think is absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, they used the air raid mold on this arm. Or skydive. Skydive, sorry. Because it has that peg that you can peg in and thus give the robot an arm cannon. And here is Grand Galvatron proper. Um, let's just give you a quick little pan. You can see now the head and chest of Galvatron is done more like the original toy design whereas on the US release it was the cartoon look which um, I like that little trade-off there um, but it's still the same head, you know, the crown um, you know, coming down, you know, there you have the arms and what have you and you know, all of the figures coming together. I mean, these are remolds, so you know what they look like as limbs. You know how they connect. 
I'm sure a lot of you already have Cyclonus or Silverbolt. I mean, really the new to this set is the heads and the color scheme and uh, laid out, layout. Color scheme and layout. I put the Infazel in the wrong syllable. But yeah, uh, I really like how this looks. I like how, you know, it came together as a set. Um, you do have a little bit of that uniformity. Uh, it's kind of funny. It does make his, his legs look a little odd just because you have that hood piece from Breakdown. Um, but hey, it is what it is. I do prefer having the bulkier robots as legs and them in arms. And of course, you can swap things around to your heart's desire. They show him with the um, stunticons. You can use them and this and that and just flip-flop and juke and jive and what have you. But yeah, this is a really cool set and I'm kind of glad I got it. You know, uh, kind of makes me wonder what I'm going to do with my old uh, Cyclonus, but uh, yeah. I mean, really, you're buying this set for the figures, so if you've been someone who's avoided the repaints, maybe this might be the route you want to go. Other than that, there's really not much more to say. Um, so, this is your old pal Chuck for Grand Galvatron and its components. We will see you next time.